So um, I'm an archaeologist by profession, so I have included lots of videos of community members talking because it's their heritage and they're much better at it than I am. Uh, so this is a project that we've been running this year. It's planning the past, and the concept is pretty simple. Um, this is our main concept. Uh, you talk to certain groups of people, and they tell you, oh no, I hated history in, in school, I really dislike archaeology, it's not my thing, and then you say, oh okay, um, so what's your team? And two hours passes, <laughs> and you say you have to go, and they look at you with this longing like, but I'm only at the 1950s. <laughs> we still have 60 more years of my team. And that's our target audience. Our target audience are the people who are actually really passionate about history, just a very specific part of history, and they don't usually consider it their heritage, um, even though it is. Um, so, okay. Uh, <coughs> we, our project targeted Glasgow, and I'm gonna hopefully have a community, nope. Yes. Hopefully have a community member. I'm Jed O'Brien. I'm the founder of the world's first football museum at Hampden Park and I'm a sports historian. Um, I wrote a book called Played in Glasgow which tried to draw together all the important sites in sport in Glasgow because as I was doing the football museum I came to realize that Glasgow was the most important sporting city in the world and therefore it had all of the most important sporting sites in the world. The south side of Glasgow is arguably the most important few square miles of sporting land in the entire world. So dotted around Queen's Park and Govan Hill you have the Wellcroft Bowling Club in Queen's Park, which comes from 1835. They have the oldest bowls rules in their minute books. You have the Queen's Park Football Club, 1867, who basically founded world football, and they played here at what was then known as the second uh, Hampden Park between 1884 and 1903. This hosted international rugby. It was a centre for athletics. You have the Hampden Bowling Club only a few hundred metres away, which arguably has the roof of one of the world's oldest sporting pavilions going back at least to the 1850s. Yeah, okay. Queen's Park founded so many clubs because so many clubs played here because it was the only major piece of grassland on the south side. Uh, you have three Hamdens and you have the city which founded Bowles and only a quarter of a mile north of here you have the site of the Victoria swimming pool and club where water polo was founded. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the world's greatest sporting um, uh, city, I'm pretty sure that's how wars get started, but um, <laughs> there's a really rich uh, sporting history here. So uh, we were looking at doing a project involving something around sports, and we found <coughs> a now defunct team, Third Lanark. So uh, what he was talking about is we we're at a location called Caskin Park, um, and that is the former playing pitch of Third Lanark. They are one of the earliest football teams anywhere in the world. Uh, there was the international match <coughs> between England and Scotland, which got everyone really, really excited, and a bunch of teams were formed around there. Third Lanark was actually um, based out of the Third Lanark as a military unit eventually went from an amateur team to a professional team. They did really well, um, made it to uh, cup finals, really important until about the mid-1960s when it started to go downhill. Um, as anything, bad management, <laughs> it was folded in the, the late 1960s. So there was a park left over. <coughs> um, this is uh, Catherine Park, at the time known as Second Hamden. Uh, well, kind of. Second Handem was Queen's Park, who then sold it to Third Lanark, but 
probably demolish the whole thing out of spite. So Third Lanark had to rebuild it. And this is what the park used to look like. Um, that is the 1950s. And then that's the 1970s after it had been abandoned. Um, let's see. If, oh. Uh, yeah, so these uh, bleachers right here no longer exist, and that is the main office. Um, <coughs> basically, we looked at this. This all of this right here has been knocked away and demolished, uh, but we thought maybe there'd be something left, and so we decided to do a project about it, uh, and thus was born playing in the past. Uh, we got funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund, and we went out and did a week of excavations and also geophys, though uh, because the groups we were working with that didn't all happen at the same time, so the project was supposed to be a week has taken a couple of months, but it's been great fun. <coughs> um, we've went out there and excavated. Here's a video that we sort of put together on the first day to get people excited. I'm McGrady, I'm curator of the Scottish Football Museum at Hamden Park. I'm absolutely delighted to be at Cathkin Park today with Archaeology Scotland to learn a bit more about Cathkin Park itself and of course of second Hamden Park. Um, this site has so much significance. It's amazing to think now that we're in a, a, a part of Glasgow that really was very much part of the development of association football. Um, Cathkin Park itself in its heyday could hold up to 50,000 spectators. Huge crowds would come here to watch Third Lanark play. Um, and it's quite kind of surreal to be here today, uh, many years later. Um, the club obviously it, it folded back in 1967, um, but it still has such a, a huge sentimental value to football fans in Scotland. Uh, and that's why the work of Archaeology Scotland here today is, is very, very important. We're going to hopefully learn as a museum at Hamden more about uh, this very important site uh, within Scottish football. Uh, and hopefully some of that story will come into Hamden Park, into the museum itself at Hamden. So um, it was what we thought was a pretty successful event. Uh, we actually did find the remains of the old clubhouse, uh, the foundations, which was really nice. Of course, it was the last day, about an hour before we had to backfill, um, as it always is. Uh, we also set up a mobile museum there. So we got a shipping container, um, a converted shipping container. So there was a, a TV in there that played uh, various different videos and had photos on slide a slide going through. Um, we put up photos on the side and did a little uh, exhibition uh, so people could come by who maybe weren't interested in doing the, participating in the excavation, of which it rained almost the entire time we were there, so there was very few people who were interested. I was actually quite amazed at the amount of people who did come out to dig. Um, but it was nice and we actually got quite a few people who actually came in from the rain with their dogs to check out the, the mobile museum there. And we basically, it was what we'd hoped for, we got people who don't normally, are, invo are not normally involved in heritage to sort of think about it as their heritage and think about archaeology and history as something that is relevant to them. So I'm going to just do the last video, which is a, one of our participants, Seamus. I'm Seamus Ferry. I'm originally from Govan Hill, about five feet down the road. Uh, I went to Holyrood Secondary, which is directly behind you. and basically found out about this park through Holyrood Secondary. So, and I'm, what, 19, sadly 19 years old, I feel like I'm getting old. <laughs> well, basically I went to Holyrood Secondary that's behind you, it's still standing, unfortunately. Um, I went to school there, and through that, through PE, um, we used to run around Cathkin Park and do cross country. And if you have a look, you can tell it's not an ordinary park. Um, through that I found out about Third Lanark and the history of the team um, and the, this in fact used to be a football stadium and um, it was also second Hamden so through that I just researched the team sadly found out about their demise and I found out that they're actually back again um, as an amateur team and from there we're hopefully trying to restore Kafkin and trying to get back to back to our home ground hopefully 
So uh, I'd just like to say thanks to our funders, thanks to the city of Glasgow for letting us dig up one of their pitches. Um, actually, we were just to the side. That was, that was one of the conditions. We couldn't touch the football pitch. Um, but it was really kind of them to let us do that. Thanks to all the participants who came out. Um, we thought it was a really great project, and we had a lot of fun. So apparently they did too. Um, and thank you for listening.